Good evening. Thanks for tuning us in. I'm Ken Malloy. And I'm Catherine Herr. An historic hearing in Washington, D.C. today. This is not a job interview. Yeah. This is hell. This, this, this is going to destroy the ability of good people to come forward because of this crap. Your high school yearbook. You have interacted with some strong words today as Brett Kavanaugh fights for his Supreme Court seat and his reputation. Kristen Holmes joins us live now from Washington, D.C. with more on today's emotional testimony. Kristen. It was a raw, emotional, and at times incredibly heated day here on Capitol Hill as we listened to testimony from Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh and from Christine Blasey Ford, the woman accusing Kavanaugh of sexual assault when the two were teenagers. The big question now, what happens next? I am innocent of this charge. Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh defending himself against sexual assault allegations. I'm not questioning that Dr. Ford may have been sexually assaulted by some person in some place at some time. But I have never done this. Christine Blasey Ford saying Kavanaugh assaulted her at a party more than three decades ago when the two were in high school. With what degree of certainty do you believe Brett Kavanaugh assaulted you? 100%. Longtime sex crimes prosecutor Rachel Mitchell standing in for the all male Republican committee members, attempting to poke holes in Ford's memory of the events. I can't give the exact date. Kavanaugh insisting the allegations are part of a smear campaign. Why aren't you also asking the FBI to investigate these claims? My family's been destroyed by this, Senator. Destroyed. And, I'm, and, I'm and, and whoever wants, you know, whatever the committee decides, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all in is, immediately. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham blaming Democrats. This is the most unethical sham since I've been in politics. And if you really wanted to know the truth, you sure as hell wouldn't have done what you've done to this guy. Kavanaugh remaining adamant he will stay the Supreme Court nominee. I will not be intimidated into withdrawing from this process. And we learned just a bit ago that that Senate Judiciary Committee vote is going to happen tomorrow morning. There have been some question as to whether or not it would still go on after that testimony. Now, a key vote for the Senate Judiciary Committee is Republican Jeff Flake. He is the one who made the call on the Senate floor just a few days ago, saying that he wanted decency in the process. Even today, he only used about a minute of his time just to say that there was still going to be doubt at the end of all of this. He was just caught in the hallway and asked how he was going to vote tomorrow. He would not answer. He only said that he they were still chasing down some documents. So a very cryptic answer there. A lot of questions still surrounding how that vote tomorrow will go. Reporting live on Capitol Hill, I'm Kristen Holmes. Back to you. Kristen, thank you for that. Joining us now with reaction is CBS 47 legal analyst David Mugridge. And David, most analysts uh, say that Dr. Ford came across as credible and sympathetic. What's your take on her testimony? Well, I think that's an accurate description. Uh, she came in under something of a, of a cloud and people weren't quite sure what she was going to do and how she was going to handle herself. And I must say that uh, she came across uh, quite strongly. And speaking of coming across strongly, a lot of uh, analysts see the, the judge coming across strongly, vehemently denying the allegations, uh, and he talked about his reputation. No question about it. The judge was on the hot seat. Uh, I'm not surprised that he responded the way he did. It's a, it's a tough call. It's very much uh, similar to what a lot of attorneys see in the courtroom in a criminal case. If you have two credible witnesses, the jury's got to make a tough decision. And in this case, you have two juries. One is the jury of public opinion, right. and the other one is the Senate. Both of us have a tough job. Yeah. And in the end, you have two credible, accomplished people that in, at the end of the day, one of them is not telling the truth. Next. Well, you have to look at, uh, you have to consider everything. You have to consider the motivations on, on both sides. You have to consider whether or not there's any corroboration on both sides. You have to consider whether or not there's been any deviation in statements that have been made on both sides. And you have to kind of evaluate. You, you look at the witness, you see how they react to your question, you see how they respond. Do they hesitate? Do they look like they're struggling to find the right word? 
Um, it is a very difficult process to find the truth, and that's what we're about right now, is to figure out what is the truth. Right. And uh, the presumption of innocence is what you deal with in the courtroom. Correct. How does that play out in a hearing like today? Well, it's front and center. There's no question about it. The United States uh, is on trial right now. The system of justice is on trial right now. We want qualified men and women to step forward to, to run for these kind of positions for the United States Supreme Court. But at the same time, we want to make sure that they've been vetted properly right. and that everybody has their opportunity to say whatever it is that they think they need to say. And that's what we're watching right now. We're watching both sides uh, make their play and make their, their case to the, uh, the jury, if you will. And although I know it's difficult, I know that there are a lot of tempers that are flaring. Right. Uh, ultimately, I think it's good for us that it, that it plays out like this. People get a chance to see how justice can work. Okay. And as the saying goes, the jury is out. The still. jury is yes. out. In yes. this case, the U.S. Senate. Legal analyst David Mugridge, thanks for joining us. Uh,